Hi all, hope you all are doing good. Uh, this is the second video in the series. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, which is the introduction where we discuss what are the different components of a report and all, uh, visit the playlist and uh, uh, go through it. In, in today's video, we'll see how to develop a list report, a simple list report. Um, we have kind of uh, deviated from the agenda that we had and now I think we should uh, start developing a document report, let's say a sales order uh, report and because while covering the uh, development of that particular report, we'll cover most of the paths which are required uh, for a report development. So let's try to build a report for the sales order uh, where in today's video we'll try to print uh, or you know we'll try to replicate what is there in the standard uh, report body which is this part uh, how this information is printed and in the future video we'll see how we can move to the header and uh, the footer part so as we all know that uh, this part which is my sales uh, lines are coming from the table sales line so my the source of my report will be the sales line so let's go to the developer environment create a new report on table sales line and save it and uh, let's say 60,000 my custom sales auto report okay now in that uh, we need some field from the sales line to be printed on my output right so uh, let's select some fields let's say we need uh, the type which is item GL or what uh, then the number associated with it uh, then we need uh, description Mm, then we need unit of measure, we need quantity, and then we need uh, uh, line amount. Okay, I don't see it. I'll, I'll app append that manually. Okay, so I need uh, one more field. I need a sales line dot um, line amount. So you can, uh, if you know it, then you can add it or, you know, if you can pull it from there, then that's okay. And you need to provide a name as we discussed in the last video. You can have the name in any format. It does not support spaces. We need to remember that. Save it. And now the first thing and which is very important for a report uh, developer to understand is the data set. So before going to the visual part or the uh, visual studio or the uh, report builder let's see what the data set of this report is so this is uh, you can see it as a data set designer this is your report data set designer so with this my data set should be ready so let's see what my data set of this report says about it so when I run it I need to go to help about this page from the request page and then preview it okay nothing displayed that's okay go to help and about this report so this is my data set which has been generated for the fields which are added so as you can see these names are actually similar to the names that we provided here which are these names so these are actually those names which are provided over there and then this is the data which is coming from the sales line and it may it's so huge because there are so many uh, you know uh, documents in the sales line right now okay now we need to put this into the picture in a table so that user can see it okay and remember about the data set because this uh, is something which plays a crucial role in your report development we'll see it again when we uh, add something on the layout uh, on the data set designer to see how it changes because based on this your visual layout actually works so if you understand the data set of the report you understand the complete report okay uh, let's stop talking and go to the layout from view layout so if you have visual studio it will open visual studio if you are comfortable with the you know uh, uh, this tool uh, report builder use that so when i open my report I can see uh, the body section this is my body section and here I can see my fields so we need to print that information which is coming into the data set in a table okay so let's add a control which is table so right now this 
control which is stable is independent and does not you know uh, is not linked to a data so for linking to the data the first thing that we do is you need to go to the properties table x properties and make sure that you specify your data set name over here uh, if you don't specify you'll not be able to select the field so if i cancel it i cannot say you know uh, it's coming as the first field right so let's specify that property so that it assigns it so okay it was assigned that that is why i was seeing it okay now i need uh, one two three four five and six fields so i'll add six columns right so three are there and i can add columns to left or right as per my requirement one two three four five and six so these are my six columns now let's understand this table first before we start going anywhere so this table as you can see have a header part and a data part so the data part of this table is actually the body which repeats based on how much data you have in your data set whereas header repeats only once okay so let's try uh, putting fields on it so let's say i put type okay then i put number this is the one way the other way around is you can select it from here i'll say description mm, unit of measure you need quantity so i say quantity and then there is line amount so i selected uh, all the fields that i need uh, you can place it uh, at, at best where you want and uh, as in my description will be a bit big so you can extend it and we'll see how the length and everything works and you want this to be bold because this is your caption or the header part so you can select all the columns which are part of the header and just select the bold so that it get bolded now as we change it to the bold so my description my header will come as bold in my layout so now actually what happens is the data set that we you know had seen on the first uh, before creating the visual layout is actually assigned to this table and then this table runs as required so now if i run it i should be able to see something like this okay now in this if you see um, i might need to have a description a bit extended or it should you know end at a line and there are some you know borders which comes by default in a table we need to remove them and the third thing is my captions are not as expected so these are the three things that we need to take care right so let's keep it this open and open the layout again the first thing is i do, you know i don't like the default borders which are coming so you can select all the table cells you cannot do by like this you have to select all the columns in your table so i selected like this and then from the properties any property which is similar to all the cells you can change that so if there is a different property like this is bold and this is not so if i select these two i cannot change the bold property but if all the property if that particular property is same i can change it so if i go here i can see the border color is set to light gray which i don't want so i can remove it okay now it will change to black i don't want border style so i can remove it as solid but i need a border after my header is printed a single line as we see in the standard report right so i can select all the row all the columns of my header and say that my border style you can you know zoom into the border style and say at bottom i need a border which is of uh, solid type okay you can increase the border width if you want so let's say i change it to the two points and that's it but it looks weird right so let's change it back to the one point okay now that's done you don't need to actually close it you can just save it and come out and we'll see it later so let's run it and see what changes has been done so now my borders are gone and it looks a bit good right so the last thing that we need to uh, do with this particular and in the next one we'll see others other part of this is uh, i don't want this to go either multi-line if it is going multi-line it should be you know uh, trimmed or it should be removed that particular so if i'm seeing this report it should be till conference and if the table is going to the next line i need to i don't want it actually so what i can do that for that is 
you can go back to the layout select that particular cell or if you want to apply it for the, all the cell that's okay and then there is a property of that of the cell which is called as can grow so if I go here and I can see a property which is can grow can grow means it allows your cell to extend if the data is more than what you specified on the width of the uh, in the design right so I change it to the false that means it doesn't allow it to grow uh, at the same time let's make it as uh, what standard is so my format which the nav standard uses standard report uses is uh, segeo ui okay and then the size that the standard nav uses is 8 at the same time the width of each row or if you set it if you set it for a column that applies to the whole row is a bit big right now so i'll change it to the uh, standard which is somewhere if I'm not wrong 450 uh, sorry uh, it's um, 0.5 centimeter yes oh sorry I changed the width it's not it's height right sorry my bad 0.5 centimeter is the width uh, is the height of the cell and the same goes for the header so let's change this also okay let's save it and let's try to run it okay if I preview it it looks a bit good right there are no multiple lines you know if the as a font is small you can see that the table came up uh, but there are still some issues in terms of header and the formatting of my decimal fields right so in the next video uh, which will be the day three we'll see how uh, what are the different options that are available with uh, Microsoft Dynamics nav to create headers in terms of the fixed constant and because there are multiple ways to do it and we'll also see how we can format our uh, uh, numeric fields which are available in the um, in the layout right that's all for today let me know your views uh, about the video if I missed something please put that on the comment section I'll make sure that uh, we take care of it in the future videos um, thank you for watching have a great day